Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Keyblade Master and welcome to my channel. Now today I'm going to be reviewing something I consider more of an interactive story than a video game. That's not to say that it's less entertaining than a video game, but I'm just going to have to review things a little bit differently. I'm only going to be showing you stuff from the first stage and when I talk about it. Mainly because I don't think you can ruin an experience with a video game through a YouTube video. A Let's Play, for example, is not the same as playing the game. If you're one of those people who say, I don't need to play the game while I watch the Let's Play, no offense, but you're just like that creepy guy at work who you see go home with the Playboy and then come back the next day and brag that he slept with three women. Yeah, right. Not the same experience, guys. You have to sit down and play the game with the controller. For example, my Bayou Billy review did not destroy anybody's experience with the game, nor would I want it to. I might suggest that they seek an experience of someone beating their head in with a sledgehammer, because it would be in the end more enjoyable than playing Bayou Billy. But with the Sherlock Holmes crimes and punishment, just the way the game is and where the enjoyment comes from, I have to be careful because I could really spoil the mystery element of this game and that could bring down the fun. So, just to be warned, you're only going to be seeing, like, from the first part, there's other parts to this game. It's a fairly large game, six chapters each, each with its own mystery element, ultimately tying in together for the final mystery, kind of similar to um, Phoenix Wright games. So let's stop yammering and get on with this review. This game is, of course, based off the Sherlock Holmes stories written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is, of course, is a fictional detective that was set to solve crimes in the Victorian era of London. This game takes place sometime during the return of Sherlock Holmes stories, and it's after the time skip. It even adapts a few stories from those books, and I think the developers of this game did an excellent job of interpreting those stories and interpreting Holmes. I have no problems with the way Sherlock Holmes is presented here. They presented him with a few of his new powers from the newer shows, and he does have a little bit of an antisocial personality, which is also important for the character, but they don't overdo it. Like the two recent movies starring Robert Downey Jr., he's a bit conceited, but he's not so antisocial that people are afraid of him or afraid to approach him and ask him for help, which is part of the character's being. You know, he usually starts off a story with someone usually approaching him and asking him for help. You don't want a guy that will bite your head off. This Holmes is exactly like that, but he's still eccentric. In fact, I like how the game starts off. You start off playing as Watson through the movement tutorial trying to dodge Holmes gunfire because he's blindfolded. And this also brings up an interesting point if you haven't read the Sherlock Holmes stories. You kind of get the impression reading between the lines that the most dangerous time to be around Holmes isn't when he's solving some sort of international mystery with huge political implications but rather when he's bored because he's either usually high off his ass or he's doing weird stuff like this. And it's just an enjoyable moment between Holmes and Watson's to help out their relationship. Which unfortunately brings me to the one bad part of the story elements in this game, and that is the character of Watson. You won't see much of him here because I'm only doing the Adventures of Black Peter part, and while the original book, he's of course in that story because he's narrating it, in the game they decided to leave him off to the side for your first mission, and that's a good thing, because Watson is useless. In the later stories where he does appear, he just mainly just teleports behind you at random, scares the crap out of you half the time, just the way he appears whenever you turn around. And then if you talk to him to ask for advice or anything, he's usually like, I have no idea what's going on in your mind, Sherlock. And it's like, ah, useless. You kind of wish Holmes did shoot him in this part. But other than that, the story's fine. You get some really great characters in each of the mysteries. Like I said, this first stage is The Adventures of Black Peter, which is an actual Holmes story, and it's told really well. 
to solve each story, you'll have to go around, you'll have to look for clues, talk to people, catch them in lies. You'll also be able to do the huge Holmes deduction look, which is where, you know, you can look at a person and you usually have to scroll around the mouse and see, you know, what they're dressed and usually Holmes gets a deduction about what this character is like, where they've been in life, and usually surprises people by telling them just from what he sees in their clothing. And the fact they added that in also makes it a nice touch. The mysteries themselves, however, are not too hard. If you've read the books in which some of these mysteries are made out of, you already know the answer before the story is done. That said, if you haven't read, or for the newer ones, they do have an interesting way of solving them. Whenever Sherlock Holmes gets all the clues, he'll enter this deduction mode in which you have to put the clues together and deduce who did the crime. Now, you can deduce multiple people and have them arrested. So you can arrest the wrong person and the crime and still move forward into the game. I like that. The game lets you check to make sure you've got it right. And if you got it wrong, you can always go back and piece together the clues differently or look for new ones if you hadn't found them all so you can get the right person if you want to. It also has a morality gauge as well. You can choose to either hang the person or let them go or show mercy to them. The character of Sherlock Holmes was not a lawman. He didn't always work for the police. And oftentimes he would do what he felt was right. For example, one of the stories that I'm not showing here, you investigate a murder that was took in place because the person who cared for the person who was going to be a victim of another crime stepped in and killed the current victim of whose Holmes is investigating. And when Holmes learns that, you know, the guy was a violent creep, he decides to let his killer go. And it's stuff like that that really kind of makes Holmes stand out as a character. And the fact that they brought it here into this game really helps you get involved with the character. Overall, the mysteries are good, and it helps make the game enjoyable because most of the game is going to be going through the story, talking to people, investigating things, and because of the this game story is so good, it helps keep it entertaining. So the story is good on a very story-driven game, but what about the rest of the experience? Is it good? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, actually. Let's start with the graphics. The graphics in this game are definitely a mix between really good and really crappy. Let's start with the crappy first. If you're in an environment, an outdoor environment, you will notice that things like the resolution will dip. If you're running around with homes, you notice that the screen tears quite often. And it's just these little things that really pull you out of the game. Now, part of the reason I think this is a problem was this was made for the PS4 and Xbox One. And I can't help but feel that they probably had problem trying to condense this down to the PS3. So what's good? Well, look at the faces and the facial animation. They're pretty much as close to perfect as you can get. They look really nice, really great, just talking to people, having them react to Holmes' different questions and allegations. It's really good and really helps the story along. So the graphics aren't perfect by any means. There are problems with them, but it, they do good when and it really counts. As for the sound, it's also pretty good. You get a lot of great voice acting coming from the characters. Just take a listen to this conversation between Holmes and the suspect. The West Country Bankers. Yes, Joshua Nelligan was my father. I am aware that it had a bad ending. It's even better when you do a conviction. Watch this. Merciful. No, I didn't kill him. Your motive? The valuable security. With the great voice acting added in with some of the great facial features, it really helps put the story and narrative together. And that's what this game is aiming for, is one really great narrative. And they succeed in doing that. But how is the quote-unquote gameplay around it? Again, a little bit of a mixed bag, but the developers of this managed to do the right thing when it comes to the gameplay. Let me explain. 
in most of these mystery adventure games, you're going to come across puzzles. This one's no different. Here you'll encounter a lot of these lock picking puzzles like you're seeing here. These can get fairly grating, especially in the later stages where the puzzles can be quite hard. There's also these other puzzles where Holmes will have to put together this imaginary picture puzzles. If you get stuck on these, you don't have to do them. I like that. You just press select if you want to continue on with the story. If you like these type of puzzles, you can do them. And there are, of course, achievements and trophies that are attached to you doing these puzzles. So you don't get off quite scot-free, but if you're just in it to enjoy the narrative, you can skip them. And that's great. I like that. These things do not get in the way of the narration. That's not to say you don't have to do any puzzles at all. You'll have to oftentimes do experiments that Holmes needs to do in order to get a deduction. There's also this one case that it has you going through this labyrinth area and then doing a switch puzzle with Watson. The only time Watson becomes useful. So there are some puzzles to do, but for the most part, they're easy environmental puzzles. You don't have to worry about getting stuck on some stupid mini game. And I really like the fact that they did that. As far as the rest of the gameplay goes, it's a pretty much a simple point and click game. You have to walk through areas, look around, whenever you see a little eyeglass appear, you'll have to press A. Holmes will either comment or it will trigger an event that will allow you to pick up stuff. Occasionally you have to press the shoulder button in order to enter this detective mode where you can look around at various objects and things will light up to grab Holmes' attention, things that normal people would miss, basically. And the game will give you clues on when to do this. The game is also pretty good at telling you you've already explored or looked at everything in a certain area. Time to move on. I do appreciate this. In a lot of these detective games like Phoenix Wright, it's very easy to get tripped up because you just didn't do a part or find a small item that gets you lost for several hours. This only happened to me once in the game. The game is very good at telling you, you know, you've found everything here, time to move on or time to piece stuff together. And I appreciate that. I don't really like uh, being stuck in these games just over one item and that's one of the downfalls of these types of games like Sherlock Holmes and Phoenix Wrights and the fact that they simplified this does not hurt the game at all. In fact, I found it making it more enjoyable. Now, after you've found all the evidence, talk to everybody, you'll have to oftentimes piece together deductions. Sometimes you'll have to stop and piece together deductions in order to move on with the case as well, but certainly towards the end, you're going to be doing a lot of these deductions, combining clues together, and then deciding what this clue means and who it points to, and deciding who to go after. You don't have to have all the clues to solve the case. However, if you want the right culprit, you're probably going to need to get all the clues. Overall, I found Sherlock Holmes to be an enjoyable game. It's not a game for everybody. If you're looking for a game that's more action-oriented and less narrative-oriented, you're going to need to look elsewhere. But if you're someone who does enjoy a good narration and a good mystery, you could do a lot worse than Sherlock Holmes' Crime and Punishment. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Anyways, that is all for today. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. This is Tommy the Keyblade Master, signing out.